Greetings and a very good morning to everybody out there. Great, great, glad to have you with us here on CTV Sports for the sixth game of the Triple Crown of Polo 2024. Casablanca are going to be taking on the powerful Senfest. And uh, as you can see, we're coming to you from Grand Champions Polo Club Field number three on this beautiful Friday morning, the 12th of April, 71 degrees Fahrenheit quite a drop in temperatures it was a very very sticky and humid yesterday so i'm sure perfect conditions for the two teams and uh, speaking of which let's have a look at the players So there you have your players, Casablanca. Remember, winners of uh, the Palm Beach Open uh, have not had the best of starts here at the Triple Crown of Polo. They lost their opening game to Kaya Polo by 11 goals to 14, so they're 0-1. Similar kind of scenario, but a much closer game for Travieso. Uh, Big part for Senfest, who were lost to Travieso by 8 goals to 9. Very, very close game. So both of these teams 0-1, which of course would suggest... We are going to have two very offensively minded teams coming in to play this sixth, sixth game of the Triple Crown of Polo. Now, you might uh, uh, be watching or uh, know that we have a game which uh, started about 15 minutes ago, game five of the Triple Crown of Polo over at the Santa Rita Polo Farm, coming to you on the Aspen Field. Now, of course, you can watch that as well. Or watch the games uh, at any time of course at a later date and in that game we've got uh, Alegria taking on the Maltese Falcons uh, it is in fact the first game for the Maltese Falcons Alegria uh, already having played a f their first match in the Triple Crown of Polo they uh, lost to Park Place by 12 goals to 13 so they're 0-1 so they've got quite a bit of pressure uh, on uh, in that game. Maltese Falcons, of course, will be going into that game um, looking for their first win. So again, a very, very exciting pairing uh, over at Santa Rita. As I said, we'll keep you updated on the scores here on this broadcast as they come in. Like I said, they started about uh, 15 minutes ago. But now the stage is set here at Grand Champions Polo Club. Field number three, Casablanca up against uh, Senfest. Uh, Casablanca, as uh, we've uh, become accustomed to today, wearing the grey shirts. You can see Sapo Cassette there, the man shaking hands with uh, Magula Prida. He's uh, in the sort of royal blue helmet there with the number four. Hilario Figueres playing uh, a very, very strong six goals. He's also got a more of a dark blue helmet there. Right. Thank you. Well, I've just been told here from our fieldside correspondent that Senfest uh, are going to have um, a change. Uh, it'll be the son uh, playing for Rob Michelle, so it stays in the family. And uh, well, let's hope uh, that uh, Rob is okay, and we'll see him. Uh, we'll see him back in the saddle again. Uh, so a slight change there by uh, Sen Senfest, uh, but everything else will stay the same um players are coming out i mean they've just finished uh, going through the names of uh the uh, the sand first team so we've got for kundalosa at number two then uh playing off seven goals magula prida playing at number three of eight goals and pedro falabella playing uh the number four position i think we're more or less uh more or less ready to get on with the first of our six uh, chuckers. And um, Harrison, thank you. That was what I was after. Harrison, Harrison is 
the uh, substitute. And uh, Harrison, of course, also playing off zero goals. So uh, Harrison coming in there, just making sure that uh, we have the right uh, uh, the right handicap. So Harrison uh, uh, Marshall coming in today for Rob Marshall. Uh, let's just quickly go through the handicaps again. Grant coming in of three goals. Hilario six. That's nine, nine, and eight, nine from Asapo Gasset is eighteen plus the eight from uh, Rufino. That makes that team twenty six. Uh, Senfest. Slightly, uh, slightly weaker there. They're only a 22-goal team. Remember, uh, Facundo Lorsa and Pedro Falabella both coming in of seven goals. Magula Prida of eight, and then the zero goaler um, Harrison Marshall seven, seven, fourteen, and eight is 22. But uh, as if you've been watching, you will know that uh, this 22-goal team is uh, anything but a walk in the park. Extremely strong, extremely motivated. Uh, and the kind of team which has, um, in previous games, and of course in the World Polar League, caused some very interesting upsets just based on the, the team spirit that's within that team. So don't be disillusioned. They're going to come into this game with a handicap advantage of plus four goals. But uh, that is uh, quite a tall order, um, even for Casablanca, to, uh, to make null and void, because this Senfest team, like I said, uh, very, very strong indeed. Now, you can see the young man there, uh, more or less on the halfway line. That is Harrison Marshall playing for, as we said, for Rob Marshall. Uh, two mounted umpires are ready, running a little bit behind schedule, and uh, we are about ready to get this first of our six chuckers of the Triple Crown Apollo uh, up and running here. Uh, very, very shortly. Yeah, as I was saying, uh, very windy uh, conditions yesterday, extremely sticky. We had a, a front which just sort of sat, uh, if you will, over Wellington, uh, not making uh, conditions that uh, agreeable. Today, temperatures have had a significant drop. The wind has died down a little bit. It's uh, still very, very comfortable, but maybe not quite as sticky as it was yesterday. So here we go then. And uh, the first uh, play, well, it looked like we had a right-of-way infringement, but uh, Sapo Cassette turning and getting on that line a little bit quicker. So Casablanca, remember they're down by four, picking up that first goal, a broken play picked up by Sapo Cassette, no mistake. As uh, my dear friend uh, Dale would say, well, you know what happens when there's a broken play, especially at this level, that very often 99.9% .9 results in a goal, and that goal here... Very nicely taken and converted by Sapo Cassette. So, chipping away, chipping away at that four-goal deficit very early on. Less than half a minute played. And uh, Casablanca picking up uh, their first goal. And again, the man who just scored it. Very quickly going around, winning the throw-in. Remember, we will have uh, the stats for you at halftime. And again, at the end of the match, just to give you an idea of exactly... How, uh, how they fared out there. And uh, as was to be expected, pace very quickly, going up very fast here. Senfest have possession for the first time in this game. And there is uh, the shot going across the field. Hilario, the man from Casablanca, coming in to try and defend and take it off Pedro Falabella. But this combination, Losa, Laprida, Falabella, absolute uh, top top polo you can expect to see there's the first uh, drive up to the front door looking for Harrison Marshall he's a bit too far out to pick up this ball uh, the near side forehand shot coming there once again from Falabella not quite hitting the target it just goes out I believe and there was a whistle let's have another closer look at this here you can see with the number three Laprida sends it up to the front door looking for Harrison it's a little bit short Ganzi yeah, Mark G uh, Grant Gansy picking up a piece there. And uh, just before Magula Prida found a little gap, there was a whistle. And it's going to be hit from the spot, quickly taken here by Sapo Cassette for Casablanca. Plays it out to the left-hand side, looking for his number three. Now, of course, uh, well, where do you start when it comes to Rufino Bensadon? Absolute uh, integral part of this team. And he got his first touch. And we have our, next, our second whistle of the game. Let's have a, 
another look at this. There's the uh, the contact. Just turning it. Ganzi, and then coming down the line already was Pedro Falabella. Little right of way infringement there. Unintentional, I'm sure. As uh, Senfest will pick up their first penalty. Now, remember, in the World Polo League, I know we've mentioned it uh, many, many times, but we can never mention it enough. The teams have a challenge. Both teams have one challenge per half, which they can use. Now, if that challenge is overturned, then they lose that challenge for the remainder of that half. If they win their challenge, they, of course, uh, retain their challenge. And as I said, uh, challenges cannot be brought forward into the second half. Penalty three, then. It'll be taken by Facundo Losa. 40 yards. No mistake. And there is that four-goal advantage restored for Senfest. Remember, they came in with a, a handicap advantage of plus four. They are 22 goals. Casablanca, 26 goals. So, as I said, prediction here is that both of these teams with an 0-1 so far are going to be looking for a clear win. So that would mean they're going to have to be very, very offensively minded. And uh, I think we're seeing that already uh, manifest itself here in this first chucker. So, ball back in play. Casablanca looked like they'd won that play. But uh, again, the, uh, the umpire's having to resort to blowing a whistle. Something must have happened in that throw-in. Let's take another closer look. Ball is thrown into play, comes out. Now then, who's got that line? Well, you would think uh, the number three there, but uh, uh, man from Senfest, Pedro Falabella, had already just jumped on that line a split second earlier. Good call there by the mounted official, so a hit from the spot, a 5A for Pedro Falabella for Senfest. <clears throat> nice little pass out uh, to the right-hand side. He's found. Losa. Losa now has Cassette uh, sticking to him. There comes the ride off. And uh, he's done enough to get a little bit of piece of that ball. And it's done enough also to send uh, this young Mao like on his way. <clears throat> Rafina Ben Sedon. Broken play. Picked up again by Losa. Losa wanted to go for the shot. Down comes the hammer on the near side there from Ben Sedon. Now having to work as uh, the defender. Tries to clear it and send it out to the boards. Senfest just get a little piece of it. And round the outside, this time second attempt. And this time he's doing everything just the way we're used to. From uh, the eight goaler, Rufino Bensadon. Finding a lovely little gap. He's got uh, Sapo set to try and clear that way from any traffic coming from behind. Rufino Bensadon takes his time. And this will be the first coast to coast for Casablanca and a superb run here by Rufino Bensadon, taking it all the way from his own goal mouth, basically. He had to defend it, which he did, and then found a little gap, takes it downfield, keeps his composure, and uh, as you can see, just with his stick down and pick up, picks up his first goal of the match. So... That is what I think we can expect to see a lot more of. The whistle will stop the action here with three minutes and ten seconds remaining in the first chucker. Our first courtesy change. Remember, the players have the ability uh, around about halfway through a chucker. The umpires will, uh, will notify the players and uh, sometimes even stop the play to allow for this courtesy change to, uh, to take place. We've had many chuckers in which they just ran and ran and ran. And obviously, it's... Uh, Quite demanding on the uh, the four-legged athlete. So around about halfway through a chucker, uh, the umpire uh, will uh, inform and let the players know. Now would be a good time to change your ponies. Big, big uh, signs and a lot of strategy goes into the uh, the changing of the horses and when you change those horses. Um, and uh, it has actually done so uh, so much good for the sport. It's reduced uh, the number of injuries. Um, the players coming back very, very quickly. And uh, they will know exactly at what time, what pony they want to be riding, which can make all the difference, especially when the game is close and uh, coming to the, to the closing stages um, of a match. Here we go. Ball back and play. Everybody very quickly out on the, out on the field. They try and keep those courtesy changes within 45 seconds to a minute, not to waste uh, too much time. Sandfest. 
Getting that ball deep into the half of Casablanca. But uh, Poker set, playing the number four, of course, which is primarily the role of the defender. Little under the next shot. That's a perfect pass for Ganzi, and he'll pick this one up on the run. Ganzi's a little bit far out to the right hand side. He checks, tries to maneuver it. He's done very well on that first touch, and that ball just across the line. But has it gone across? Well, it wasn't Grant. There was another player that came in just behind, but what a great run and a great pass by uh, Ganzi, here you see him coming up towards that goal mouth, try to finish it on the near side, and then Rafino Benza Don with a deflection, a deflection coming off the number three, Magula Prida. So second goal here for Rafino Benza Don for Casablanca. Making it three goals to five. So uh, again, chipping away at that advantage. Turned on the halfway line. Here we go then. A quick response. This could be a response. The pass coming from Falabella. Looking for Harrison. Mashal. Mashal. Ah, oh, he got a piece of it. Sapo Cassette cleans it up again. Now then. What's he got up his sleeve this time? Sapo drills one down the middle. And uh, he saw that he had for Hilario and or Grant Ganzi. Uh, and it's going to be left for Grant. And Grant will pick this one up, send it back possibly to Hilario. The give and go. Hilario, one, two, three touches. Has he done enough? Of course he has. So Hilario also now picking up uh, his first goal. There's that broken play. Grant just drills that one back down. Good oversight there from the three-goaler. And Hilario just makes it look so easy. Nearly took the goal judge with him. We need him, Hilario. Thank you. So, four goals to five. Casablanca coming out here on fire in this first chucker. Everyone apart from Grant, but then again, he's been instrumental in two of those goals. Uh, the backhand we saw by Rafino Benzadon. That was an assist by Grant. And just now for Hilario Figueroa. So, Three of the four players having scored, but like I said, without Grant, those goals would not be there. On the halfway line, ball thrown back into play. Laprida finds himself in a bit of a sticky situation there. Surrounded by Casablanca defenders on the near side. Losa, Cassette coming in again. He's very, very uh, hard there on the man. There's another bump. They go into the corner. Now a little bit of support from Laprida. Laprida will pick it up, take it off the boards. Everybody now needs to clear to allow him to make the play. La Falabella. And that's just going to go out of bounds, which will bring us also to the end of our first chaka. So Casablanca getting off to just the kind of start they wanted. Four goals to one. Overall, of course, it is four goals to, uh, to seven. Make sure you join us when we come back for chaka number two. Greetings and welcome back and a very good morning. Coming up to 20 past 10. Great to have you with us here, CTV Sports, on this uh, Friday 
uh, morning, the 12th of April. Triple Crown of Polo. We've got two games going on. Now, I did say we've got a game that started uh, about 45 or about half an hour ago, uh, taking place over at um, Santa Rita Polo Farm. They're playing on the Aspen Field, of course, all part and parcel of the Triple Crown of Polo 2024. Alegria with uh, Sugar Erskine, Jason Crowder, Tincho Molos, and Fred Mannix are up against the Maltese Falcons. Um, with Gonzalito Pieres, Alejandro Navigio Estrada, Juan Martinero, and from what I understand, Melissa Ganzi is back in the saddle, which I uh, hope is the case, because I remember she was uh, injured uh, halfway through the season, so it's great to have her back in the saddle. And I can tell you they've uh, just played two chuckers over there, over at uh, Santa Rita, and the Maltese Falcons um, coming out to start, you know, they've just started the third, and the Maltese Falcons are in the lead by four goals to one. So uh, a lot going on over there. Remember, you can watch that game in full, of course, also at your leisure uh, here on Chucker TV when uh, you have the time. And when this game is over, welcome back to the sixth match, uh, starting a little bit later than the one uh, this morning over at Santa Rita. Casablanca here in the grey shirts. Let me just quickly give you a rundown again of who's out there on the ball at the moment. That's the number two, Hilario Figueres, six goaler. Now, Rafina Ben Sadon. He is the number three player. Number four, of course, Sapo Cassette. And Grant Ganzi at the front there just to pick up that ball and try and steer it in on the near side under the neck as well. That is Casablanca, 26 goals in handicap. Senfest uh, coming in today for uh, Rob Ma Machal. We've got Harrison Machal uh, playing off zero goals. Then Facundo Losa, Magula Prida, and Pedro Fala Bella. They are a 22-goal team. We're given four goals on handicap from the beginning, and they picked up a penalty from the line for Kundalosa in that first chucker, um, which uh, was only the one goal that they scored. Casablanca, Rufina Benzadon picking up two, Sapo Cassette picking up the first goal of that match, and then Hilario Figueres also putting one on the scoreboard. So four goals um, to, uh, to five. Uh, that one goal from uh, Senfest plus the four, of course, uh, makes five. And uh, now let's go back to the action. Very, very fast pace out there. It looks like we have a, uh, a little situation on the boards. Pedro Falabella gets uh, into some traffic there with uh, Ganzi and does a very elegant <laughs> dismount coming over the top of the handlebars. So we'll just uh, give him a moment to... Um, Get back in the sun. Luckily, he did not sustain an injury. Of course, our medics always on on site and very quick uh, to make sure that the players are okay. Falabella is okay. He's back in the sun, and I have to give it up to that pony just standing there, very, very calm. Probably thought, what are you doing? Get back on. And he is back on. So, here we go then. Let's see... Uh, what the umpires make of that. And as I said, five goals to four is how we started here, the second chuck. It's going to be hit from the spot, taken by Sapo Cassette. A lovely pass up to the front door. Gansey couldn't quite make the contact. Benson Don will try and steal it. And away we go here with uh, Senfest on the move. Uh, well, maybe not, because Casablanca, you can tell they are hungry today after that match against Kaya. They wanted to make everything right again and uh, want to pick up well, what would be their first win here in the Triple Crown of Polo. Remember, coming off their win of the, all, the, the Palm Beach Open last Sunday. What a cracking game that was. Uh, so a lot here to play for Casablanca. We'd also like to get their hands on that Triple Crown, a beautiful trophy, which, of course, you'll see on display a week on Saturday for the final. Uh, we can only uh, urge you to come down and watch that final. Remember the World Polo League, highest level of polo played anywhere in the world outside of Argentina. But we have a situation here. Let's have another look what happened there. The backhander coming in from... Uh, Grant Gansey, uh, you see a player coming down the line as uh, Sapo Cassette uh, thought he was in the clear to try and steal it. Difficult call there, but uh, that ball and that line is so, so important. And that is probably one of the most toughest jobs for the umpires to determine, especially when we have a quick line change, who has automatic possession of that new line, uh, who gets onto that new line first. Sapo here uh, just getting caught out, unfortunately, 
uh, as that right away had already been uh, very much established by Senfest. Back to the action then. Let's go and see Hilario doing enough to allow Ganzi, who gets a, a bit of a bump there. Hilario could not stop Falabella from stealing that ball, and uh, he will be sending Losa downfield. Facundo Losa on the near side will try and work it in. Good first touch, and then the under the neck on the near side. What a cracking goal here by the servant goaler Facundo Losa. Yeah, have another look at this. Takes it out towards the boards. He did very well to keep it in play. Checks. And then on the near side, and then on the near side, under the neck, puts it through. Cracky goal here by Facundo Losa. Well, remember they came in with a four-goal advantage. Uh, that has shrunk down. Well, it was down to just the one-goal advantage. They now have managed to restore a little bit of a cushion for themselves. Two goals Still in the lead, six goals to four for Senfest, who uh, I'm not surprised did not get off to that perfect start in that opening chuck. And now look at this, Michal. Oh, Harrison Michal, that would have been a great goal from Harrison. Very unlucky there, got himself just in the right place, finishing. And he'll probably want that. Uh, You'd like to get another crack at that or forget that very quickly. Unlucky there, Harrison, uh, but great positioning from uh, the young man. And, of course, Casablanca, well, they won't take no prisoners. They'll score goals instead. What a perfect pass on the green. Hilario Figueres just to put it through. It had a little deflection, and well done, Harrison, coming back all the way with Hilario, sticking with his man, and he did enough to avoid uh, Hilaria to put that one through, so uh, very quickly rectified the situation as uh, you can see the players now going for a very quick uh, courtesy change with just under um, three minutes remaining here in Chaka at number two. So after a bit of a miss hit there by Harrison, he uh, did everything right and came back and took on the six goal at Hilario Figueres and avoided him from picking up a goal. So great defense by uh, Senfest and especially to Harrison Marshall. So I have to uh, correct myself. I've just been told that uh, it's just slightly up over three minutes remaining here in Chaka number two. Of course, there's always a... Uh, the umpires will always try and blow that whistle for the courtesy change when they get to the halfway line. So, the up. Oh, um, news just in. Halfway through uh, the third chucker, Alegria have uh, uh, rolled up their socks or rolled up their sleeves. It is now four goals apiece between Alegria and uh, the Maltese Falcons. So well done, Sugar Jason, Tincho and Fred coming back very strong uh, against uh, the Maltese Falcons. Remember, you've got Gonzalito Pierre's nine goal, Alejandro Navidro Estrada's seven goal, and the ten goal of Juan Martin Nero. So uh, well done, Fred, Mannix, and your team for uh, coming back very strong here in that third. Chaka Alegria versus the Maltese Falcons, game five of the Triple Crown of Polo 2024. Good shot there of uh, the man with the number four, Pedro Falabella. Uh, always talking to his team. It's... Uh, Always a pleasure to see how this team works so well together. And they play a lot together, of course, and they uh, know exactly where they need to be at any given time. Here we go then. Losa will send that one uh, downfield. Once again, looking for Falabella. He's got Hilario coming in to challenge him. Ganzi picks up the broken or the loose ball. Falabella getting a bit of traffic there from Hilario Figueres. Casablanca, yeah, very active, shutting down any kind of space very quickly to allow or to not allow Senfest to play their game because once they do, they are an unstoppable force. As I say, have done so well throughout this season. On the near side, turned around very elegantly. A uh, little challenge coming in from uh, Ganzi. Now the chip shot out to the left-hand side. And that will be picked up by Laprida. Laprida with a monster shot up to the front door. That rotation again working very well here for Senfest. Hilario stops, turns it, works it, leaves it for Sapo. Nicely done. Falabella will stick with um, 
Figueras. Sapo. Is he eyeing up that goal mouth? Now, remember, only in the World Polo League. You can actually pick up a two-point conversion if you take a shot from anywhere beyond the halfway line and then, of course, play it over that halfway line. No other player is allowed to touch it. And if you can do that, you will pick up a two-pointer. Only one man has done that so far this season. We had quite a few, uh, few more last season, but Santi Toccolino, so far the only man to have actually achieved that. Uh, we have another interruption here, a whistle. Now, remember, the umpires can, of course, trigger any play. Throw it back to the IRO, our instant replay official, to uh, determine exactly what happened. You'll be able to study the action frame by frame. Well, you can see here that Hilario's stick uh, was uh, maybe not quite where it should be. It's always very dangerous and uh, a potential hazard if you have your stick in front of the opposition's ponies. Okay, well, I've just been told that uh, the, uh, the play was triggered. But um, from what I understand, we have offsetting fouls. So no foul on, on, that, uh, uh, on that play. So we're going to continue with the throw-in. Sapo Cassette. Trying to... Uh, trying to do something with it. Another whistle will stop the action. A minute... And uh, 35 remaining. Let's have another look at this very closely. Sapica said, yeah, well, I think it was not uh, the man with the number two, but it was Magula Prida who was actually in Sapo's way, blocking. So another right-away infringement. That uh, is where that whistle came from. So um, a blocking foul, and uh, the result of which being a penalty for Casablanca. And, of course, the man who's... Penalty two for Sapo. No mistake. So Casablanca keeping on track here. Goal number five. Just uh, one down from uh, Senfest. And I can tell you also at the end of, the th of that third chakra over the other match over at Santa Rita, it is now four goals apiece at the end of chakra number three. So an exciting game going on over at, uh, at Santa Rita. As I say, Alegria 0-1 looking for their first win, as will be uh, the Maltese Falcons. And uh, now let's go back to this game here. And we've got Rafino Benzadon working it hard into the corner. Gets a little bit of uh, traffic once again there, but uh, no foul called. Now picked up by Losa. We're down to the last few seconds of play here in Chaka number two. Nice give and go. Back to Falabella. A bump. A knock there from uh, Cassette. Out to the boards. Well, Sandfest will be happy to take this, uh, even if it's ever so slight, this little lead into uh, the next uh, Chaka. They get the ball over the halfway line. Sapo Cassette. We'll stop and turn. We're down to the last 10 seconds of play. Now then, can Casablanca maybe pick up another one and get the equaliser? Ganzi trying to do exactly that. Falabella. Hilario overrides. They all come charging down the line, and that will bring us to the end of chucker number two. So, a goal apiece. Five goals to six. You don't want to miss chucker three. Join us when we come back here, CTV Sports.
Once again, a warm welcome. Great to have you with us here on this uh, Friday morning, the 12th of April, Triple Crown of Polo. And it really has such a nice ring to it. We've got two matches going on uh, this morning. Alegria and the Maltese Falcons, where I can tell you it's four goals apiece at the end of that first half. So uh, well done to both of those teams. They're playing over at Santa Rita uh, on the Aspen field. But uh, of course, here uh, we are bringing you Casablanca. Uh, who are 0-1 in the Triple Crown as Art Senfest. Casablanca losing their opening match to Kaya by 11 goals to 14. Senfest, a similar situation, 8 goals to 9. They lost to uh, Travieso. So both of these teams, and exactly as we predicted, very offensively minded, have come out very, very strong here from uh, the first chucker of play. Casablanca, who were down uh, from the uh, the get-go by four goals. Remember, they are a 26-goal team, Senfest 22, so four goals given on handicap. But those initial four goals were um, were scored by Casablanca. Hilaria picking up a great goal, Rafina Benzadon picking up two, and Sapo Cassette also picking up two goals. Uh, but Senfest, of course, are, are a, a force to be reckoned with, like you can see here, Facundo Losa. Losa with the finishing touch. Uh, what a great touch that is indeed. And uh, Facundo Losa is actually the only player so far to have scored for Senfest. He scored in the first from the line, a penalty three, and then he scored in the second and now here in the third. Uh, we had another uh, goal from uh, Sapo Cassette in the second. Um, so it's been a very, very close game. Uh, so far, and uh, Casablanca just still not able to, or haven't yet been able to, uh, to manage to actually draw a level because uh, Senfest have just been doing a, a very stellar job here. They know what they're up against, against this uh, very, very strong Casa uh, Blanca team, winners of the Palm Beach Open. And so far, they are keeping them in check. Cassette here, now in a two-man battle with uh, Facundo Losa. Coming out on top. Oh, he's lost it. Losa might get another chance. He does. Yeah, I thought uh, there might have been a slight little situation on that turn. Wouldn't mind having another closer look at that. Here we go then. You see Cassette picks it up on the near side. Broken play. Well, that to me looked like it could have been the right away there for Facundo Loza. Let's see what the umpires make of that. They might trigger this one. Of course, they have the ability to trigger any play to uh, get the IRO to have a closer look at this. Very, very fast. And uh, again, not an easy call to make. So we'll wait for the outcome of uh, what the two umpires have agreed. Early on here in uh, Chaka number three. Well, as I suggested, that uh, right of way was uh, ever so slightly crossed by Cassette. And um, that right away infringement will result in a penalty for Senfest. Penalty three, and it'll be taken by the man himself, Kundalosa. Could be his fourth goal of the match, and you, uh, well, you nearly put it into the bucket of balls there. So well done. His second from the penalty three spot, his uh, fourth goal, goal overall for uh, Facundo Losa. So four goals. <laughs> on uh, his account and an a very important goal as well because you can see that is kindly kind of uh, restored that four goal advantage which of course means the pressure is still very much on and that's uh, evident here by the way they're playing Casablanca they want to get this job done and ideally get it done in the first half but as I said this Senfest team absolute magic the way those four gentlemen play together. Look at this, another nice ball down the field. And uh, Sapo Cassette not happy. And look at this, Laprida, Laprida. Well, he won't, he, he might not get past, uh, or he got past Sapo Cassette. But Hilario Figueres, also uh, a very talented all-rounder. Uh, 
He's not uh, another one that's not easy to get by. Ganzi on the boards. Needs to center it a little bit. A little bit unlucky. In comes once again Facundo Losa. Sapo wants to get the ball back. Still Losa working it very, very hard. Dangerously close in front of his own goal mouth. Can't afford a mistake now here because Casablanca will, I'm sure with that opportunity. And there is exactly what I was talking about, Hilario Figueres. He got a piece of it. Very close, not much in it there. And uh, they've been running and running. So, slightly earlier than maybe normal, but that makes a lot of sense. A courtesy change. Casablanca having to go all the way, of course, back downfield. And, like to maybe look at my producer and see if he can see me if we have an update from our other match. Any news uh, from the Allegria Maltese Falcons match? Still 4 4. Still 4 4 over there at Santa Rita, Allegria, and the Maltese Falcons. We will, of course, keep you posted on, uh, on any developments over there. Very, very close and tight game. And I've just heard Allegria have just picked up another goal, which would make it five goals to four. So they were down one goals to four at the beginning of the third. At the end of half time, it was 4-4. Four, four. And now Allegria in the lead against the Maltese Falcons. I'm sure that is a very exciting game going on over there as well. Good shot here of the Casablanca boys coming back out. Uh, talking. And just comparing notes, Rafina Bensadon there and uh, Hilario Figueres and Grant Ganzi. A good, uh, good three and a half minutes remain here in this first half. And I'm pretty sure that uh, the objective for Casablanca was to uh, at least get those four goals null and void so that it would be a, an evenly balanced uh, second half. They haven't quite achieved that yet, but I'm sure that uh, will be uh, will be coming soon, the way they're playing. But then again, Senfest are going to do everything they can to make it uh, as difficult as they possibly can. Here we go then, outlet pass. And that's a nice run, a lot of space here. Well, Casablanca will be thinking, hang on, how can he get so much space? Here's the shot uh, into the danger zone. That ball is still running. And uh, what an incredible goal here by the number three, Magu Laprida. His first of the match. Again, an incredible run all the way down the field. Ah, but there was a whistle. Somewhere along the line, something not quite running. Uh, I think it was on the approach, whereas that ball coming from the boards, it might have been a, uh, a right-of-way infringement. So, goal does not stand. It stays at uh, five goals to eight. Sapo Cassette for Casablanca, but I'm sure that would have been a warning call to allow uh, a Senfest player to literally just take that ball all the way down the field. Ben Sedon. A little under three and a half minutes now remaining here in the first half. Cassette on the near side. Gansy's going up. There's the pass. Gansy putting on uh, the, uh, pressing down on the accelerator. Slightly overcooked that one. It'll be picked up again by Losa. Gansy sticking with his man. Losa now on the near side. A half volley shot. Nicely done. And here we go. Harrison Marshall. Good first touch, gets it over the halfway line. Harrison needs a bit of backup. Gets it in the form of the number four, Pedro Falabella. And that uh, went a bit too far out to the left. A bit of a miss hit. And it just goes to show you that even Palafella, Fa Pedro Falabella is human because these guys really are absolutely exceptional. The way they control those poor ponies. Uh, the eye for the ball, the speed at which they stop and turn and the speed at which they just snap a pass uh, across the field again, not wasting any time. Casablanca would like to pick up at least one more goal if they can. Now then, Hilario Figueres, look at that pony, going flat out, slightly topped it, lands uh, back at the... At one at the door, I was going to say. Rufino Benza, Don, he's going to take a shot from distance. Just wide. 
just, just wide. But an incredible pace here being displayed by both Casablanca and Senfest. So quickly taken then, the ball went over the back line, a knock in coming here for uh, Senfest. Pedro Falabella, this time out to the right hand side, looking for Magoo. Magoo Laprida, back to Falabella. That rotation working like a, a Swiss timepiece. Hilario. Great ball control, great pony control, great horsemanship from uh, the six goaler. We'll leave that one for Rufino. Ben Sedon. Hilario taking uh, Laprida with him. Still Ben Sedon. Now leaves it for Sapo. And Sapo, of course, dangerous from any distance. Sends that one up to Ganzi. Controlled it on the near side. And a whistle. Now that will be an interesting angle to watch that play again. The ball came from, here it comes from Sapo. Well, it looked relatively clean. Gansey was trying to take it up on the near side, but was he blocked? Umpires have decided, to me, that looked like a a blocking foul. And um, we still haven't had any challenges, but... Gotcha. So, there was a challenge called by White, i.e. by Senfest. They lost their challenge. The call stands. And uh, Casablanca will get a penalty two taken from the spot. And that will be converted by Senor Sapo Cassette, his second from the penalty two spot. And uh, that, of course, brings them within two goals of uh, Senfest. Still in the lead by eight. And they should be, uh, there should be enough time for the players to get back to the halfway line for another throw-in. Yeah, here we go before we hear... The, uh, or have the first horn on the field. Ball's back in play. Picked up by Laprida. Laprida's another one of those players you don't want to give too much space to. That ball's uh, still running. Ganzi, he got a piece of it, but Falabella just doing enough to pick up uh, his first goal of the match to restore that three-goal cushion, and that will bring us to the end of chucker number three. So... What a turnaround and what a last-minute goal here. Nicely picked up by Senfez. It's going to get super exciting. Make sure you stay with us here for the second half of this Triple Crown of Polo 2024 Casablanca versus Senfest. My name is Nacho Estrada. I'm from Argentina, eight goals. Hilario Figueras, uh, five goals from Argentina. My name is Martin Jauregui. I'm a handicap is six goals. I'm from Argentina. Silvestre Navillo, and I'm from Argentina, Buenos Aires. I'm Tomás Pérez from Argentina, and I'm six goals. Francisco Spinacci, and I am from Argentina, Buenos Aires. I'm Juan Bolini, and I'm uh, we go polo player right now, but it could be eight. And uh, I'm from Argentina. I oh, know, actually, now I'm American. No, here is a, it's amazing. The view, the, the fields, everything is uh, super nice. Question is what I don't like about it. I think I like everything about it. Uh, the weather, the field. Right now in the summer, I would say the best job in the world. Friendship, the, the people, the, 
the scenery, everything. This is my seventh year coming in a row and I feel like I'm at home right now. So me and the family go around like, like we know the place for a long time and, and we enjoy the summer a lot. When I come here, uh, winter and summer, I actually like Aspen more in summer. There's more stuff to do. All the mountains around here, like it's a pretty nice place. And it is nice to play because they are very good horses and I play with a lot of friends. No, I like the polo, the horses and the people. I like to do mountain biking and to go to the lake. Yes, going to the lake, uh, stay here in the barn, everything. It looks amazing, it's my first time here, but uh, all the, the, the things they, they're doing today is, is amazing. So I'm going to be uh, enjoy, and I appreciate to, to inviting me to be here in the, in the season. Christmas in July, uh, kids, are, kids are always looking forward for it. The day they come to Aspen, they know, they, they related with Christmas in July. It's an extra that they have here. I like Christmas in July because we like get all together and we receive a lot of presents. have an opportunity. Santo Bellini gonna fire one from 60. Oh! Off the post.
Welcome back, everybody. Great to have you with us here. Nice uh, shot there of uh, uh, the pony lines of Casablanca and uh, Grant Gansey is about to get uh, uh, on his pony. And here a good shot of all the four players. Grant, Rufino, Guillermo, Sapo, they call him. And, of course, Hilario Figueres. Uh, very, very young team. And also, of course, uh, Senfest with uh, Rob Marshall, Facundo Losa, Christian, a.k.a. Magula Prida, and, of course, Pedro Falabella. Right. Well, um, we do know that it's, uh, I believe, five goals apiece at the moment over at the other match, Alegria against the Maltese Falcons. And I need to correct myself. Uh, we, It's 6-5. Thank you very much. 6-5 in favour of Alegria. And, uh, and we also had a change in the lineup there. John Klopp. Uh, playing the number one position for the Maltese Falcons. And you'll see uh, John, of course, uh, for the remainder of the Triple Crown of Polo here, jumping in for uh, Melissa uh, Ganzi. So that is uh, what's going on over there. Uh, over here, of course, Grand Champions Polo Club field number three, Casablanca, who came into this game with an 0-1, as did uh, Senfest. Um, they were down by four goals from the beginning, but picked up four goals in that first chucker. Hilario Figueres picking up uh, his first, and then Rafina Bensadon, two Sapo Cassette also. He was actually the first man to score uh, in that uh, first chucker. Facundo Losa picking up a penalty three, um, making it uh, five goals uh, to four at the end of that first chucker. Remember, Senfest, 22 goals. They were given four goals on handicap. But if we isolate that chucker, four goals to one for Casablanca. So they nearly got the job done. Chucker number two, a goal apiece. Up a cassette from the penalty two spot. And again, a, a goal by Facundo Losa. Uh, they left the field uh, five goals to six. So again, just that one goal in it. But then in, uh, in chucker number three is where uh, Senfest turned it up a little, a little bit. Again, Facundo Losa picking up two goals, one from regular play, one from the line, penalty three, as did Pedro Falabella. And those three goals versus the one coming from Sapo Cassette from the line made it nine goals to six. So they are definitely making Casablanca work for this win. Um, if not going to try and, of course, prevent them from getting the win. Senfest would like to get uh, their first victory. Remember, they lost to Traviesa, eight goals to nine. Casablanca to Kaya, 11 goals to 14. So uh, it is a must-win game here on, uh, on the table. And Casablanca, I'm pretty sure, will continue playing this game the way they did from uh, the first chucker. They have possession. Rafino Benza Don with a very, very precisely targeted pass there to send it into the danger zone. He's going to have to actually pick it up again. Rafino Bensadon to finish what he started. Well, that's what he does, and he does it so well and with so much ease. Rafino Bensadon now picking up his third goal of the match. It all started uh, with that pass. Uh, which he was trying to send, I think, to Grant Gansey, but had to finish what he started, and well done for doing so. So, Casablanca, again, picking up the first goal here in the second half, the fourth of our six chuckers. Two goals down, and in the past, Sanfest have been very quick to respond with another quick uh, goal. They've won the throw-in. Little back kind of there from Sapoka set. Well, he might be appealing that he came across. Umpire saying no foul, play on. And the umpires will be as lenient as they possibly can uh, to create a, a flowing, positive uh, game of polo. As soon as anything comes within the vicinity of being dangerous uh, or a hazard for both the four and the two legged athlete, then of course they'll blow the whistle. So, um, not always an easy job. I think uh, you just saw on that replay a pretty open shot case. Line had already been established by uh, Senfest, so hit from the spot taken by Pedro Falabella. Turned by Laprida and stolen by Sapo Cassette. 
Gansey going up. But is he going up in vain? Rafino, I don't think he is. Rafino Benzadon will send it out to the right-hand side. Again, that rotation working super, super well. Cassette, a slight overhit. Laprida appealing to the umpires, who um, are saying play on. Little steal. In comes Losa. Takes it round the bend. On the near side. Well done. Facundo gives it back to La. Laprida, and look at that. Harrison Marshall running upfield again. Oh, what a great give and go here. Now, this should have uh, Harrison Marshall's name written all over it. Yeah, he's got a touch. Not the perfect touch. Hilario coming in straight away to pick up the loose ball. He's got uh, Losa there trying to challenge him for said ball. Nice little touch by Ben Sedon. Left behind for Hilario. Figueres now can start a new counter-offensive here. Doing ever so well, picking up that ball. He really does work hard. Hilario sends it downfield. That was intended for Sapo. And Labella got a piece of it. Now, was Ben Sedan on that line before anyone else? Pass. We'll have another closer look at this. Here you see the, uh, the attempted pass from uh, Hilario to uh, Sapo. And you see, this is what happens. Both the players believing that they have the right of way. And, uh, and it's sometimes not an easy call for the umpires to determine who was on that ball first. And you can see heated discussions going on there with Laprida. So that this does not disrupt the flow too much. But umpires standing with their decision. They've dropped the ball. And it's going to go in favor of uh, Casablanca. Yeah, it's just that very, very little gap. And sometimes can make all the difference. Well, the foul initially stood, uh, but the foul got uh, got made a little bit worse. Uh, there was a technical, so some sort of verbal uh, discussion, which is why that has been moved uh, a bit further downfield. So a technical foul, not really something that you can afford to be given away, not at this level and not against somebody like Casablanca, the result of which being now a penalty two, 30-yard shot, four Casablanca. And uh, again, no mistake. His third from exactly that spot. His fourth overall, but his third penalty from the line for Sapo Cassette. So again, coming within a goal of Senfest's nine scored thus far. But still a lot of time remaining here in Chaka. Chaka number four. Ball back in play, picked up by Hilario. And again, they come to an abrupt stop. Here's the throw in on the halfway line. Now then, who gets to that line first? Well, Sapo Cassette, you could see there reaching in front of uh, Facundo Losa, but now was Losa too late on that line? Was uh, Sapo Cassette within the realms of the legalities? Because you could look at it that he was riding into his swing or into his shot. And that, again, is very much dependent on who was on that line first. Well, the umpires looks like they've just given it to uh, Casablanca. And a hit from the spot. A penalty 5A, then, is the consequence. Again, not an easy call to make there for the mounted officials. So, Sapo Cassette. Will he attempt the two-pointer? I don't think anybody's actually uh, even contemplated that, but this sort of a pass to Rafida Bensadon just to pick up at least one goal, I'm sure would, would have done the job. Didn't quite work out the way Sapo had planned and uh, Rufino. So now 
our courtesy change in chakra number four. As I look through the glass window here to see if there's any update on the other game. Any news there? Allegria Maltese Falcons. Well, I'm guessing no news is good news, so no change there. As soon as we have any updates for you, we'll, we will, of course, let you know as they come in. We, we, it was uh, five goals to four the last time we had an update from uh, Santa Rita in that game, Allegria versus the Maltese Falcons. So a very close game just up the road here from Grand Champions Polo Club and a very close game here also at uh, or on field number three between Casablanca in the grey shirts and, of course, Senfest uh, in the white. Players coming back out. Still anyone's game. And as we said, you know, this, uh, this Senfest team, you know, against Travieso, finalists of uh, the Palm Beach Open, lost by one goal, eight goals to nine. And uh, Casablanca, fully aware and know of the danger and the power uh, within within this uh, this Casablanca team. They have possession, and it'll be this young man, Pedro Falabella, to get the remaining a little over three and a half minutes of Chaka number four underway. Shot out to the right-hand side, looking for Laprida, found Laprida, and this is what is so unique about the World Polo League, is this one touch Polo that we talk about here, the precision of the passes, the precision, precision also of the positioning play, where the players uh, find themselves to not only receive the pass, but also then to make the pass, always uh, with the intention to try and shake off um, your opponent. Casablanca, as I said, having to work very hard for this. Here we go. Ben Sedan. Trying to, oh, just able to control it. We'll leave that one for uh, Cassette. He overrides. Hilario with a monster shot. That could go all the way. Ben Sedan picks it up on the bounce. Incredible polo. And Ganzi trying to do uh, the millionaire shot. Well, the, goal, the, the ball does go over. But there was a lot happening. A lot happening there. Looks like the umpires are going to say, no, no, that stands. Let's have another closer look at this. The monster shot coming in from Hilario. Ben Sedan there nearly finishing it. And then oh, he just tried to tail it. And then coming out of nowhere, Sapo Cassette picks up the equalizer. Nine goals apiece. So not quite did they get the job done in three chuckers. It's taken them, uh, well, the better part of three and a half chuckers to get uh, level. And uh, now, of course, uh, the pressure mounting here for Senfest. As Casablanca win the throw in again, the rotation working. Hilario, big upon Sapo, Cassette, one touch, two touch, and a hat trick for the nine goaler, Sapo, Cassette. And with that, puts his team in the lead for the first time and into double figures. Casablanca now really turning up the heat. A great finish after a great pass. And a hat trick deservedly so for Sapo Cassette. A minute and a half remains here in Chaka number four. So now she was on the other foot. How will Senfest react and respond to this very strongly playing Casablanca? A little backhand chip shot. And then this time it could be Hilario Figueres. You got on that line super quick. It's all about getting on that line. You can see it here again from the boards. There's the backhand. And yeah, the angle, the lesser angle, very much for uh, Hilario Figueres. So well done. Picking up uh, a hit, or a, well, first of all, possession, and a hit from the spot. A little over a minute remaining. Now, will Sapo Cassette tempt, maybe, to go for a two-pointer? Just behind, about five or six yards behind 
the halfway line. And first, able to receive it. Do not want to concede another goal here. If anything, want to try and get the equaliser. Well, they've got enough time to do it if they can run that ball all the way down towards the south end of this field. Losa gets into Casablanca territory. Still Losa. Ganzi in front. Laprida behind Losa. He could shoot. Wants to get a little bit closer and then a a perfect position and uh, the under the next shot just uh, not uh, not right there just yet they're working it very hard again a bit of traffic and uh, the number four Falabella trying to hammer that one and that one just went wide and that, I'm sure, will bring us to the end of Chaka number four. So a big, big opportunity there to draw level. I'm sure Senfest uh, will be discussing that play and a few others. Make sure you join us. Two more Chakas coming up here for the Triple Crown in this thrilling match between Casablanca and Senfest. Stay with us here, CTV Sports. When I founded the Taqueria 48 years ago, the goal was to service polo players field side and carry a complete line of polo equipment. Since those early days, we now carry everything for the horse and rider. Anything that goes on or near a horse, you're likely to find here in our store. We still have polo equipment made by polo players for polo players. Welcome back, everybody. Great to have you with us here. Triple Crown of Polo, double header simultaneously this morning. And I can tell you, we're in the sixth and final chucker over at Santa Rita, Alegria, and the Maltese Falcons. It is seven goals apiece over there. So I'm pretty sure that uh, throughout this uh, uh, fifth chucker, which is about to start here at Grand Champions Polo Club between Casablanca and Sanfest, we will have an update on uh, how that game will have finished Allegria with Sugar Erskine, Jason Crowder, Tincha Murnos, Fred Mannix against the Maltese Falcons, led by John Klopp, Gonzalito Pieres, Alejandro Navizio Estrada and Juan Martin Nero. As I said, seven goals apiece. Uh, it didn't quite look that way from the beginning when um, the Maltese Falcons were leading at one point by four goals to one. Uh, Allegria came back very strong throughout that game. It was five goals apiece at the end of the fourth. Now seven goals apiece, and they're still playing in the sixth and final chucker. But let's now focus back here on this very important game. Casablanca, after a lot of hard work, able to get the equaliser and the lead in this game. Ten goals to nine. Four goals coming from Casablanca. Three alone from Sapo Cassette. One from Rafina Bensadon. And the man I just spoke about, Sapo Cassette, is on the ball as I speak. Bringing it, uh, bringing it down to seven minutes. He's got Losa on his hip. The near side backhand shot. All relatively clean. And now Rufino Bensadon slams on the brakes. As uh, the number four there, Falabella, but in vain, will be appealing or is appealing to uh, the mounted official. Now, did that ball cross that line or not? Clearly not, because they're playing on. Bensadon, the man who sent that uh, rocket of a ball uh, into that danger zone. Still Rufino. 
Still Ben Sedong changes it now to the near side, looking for a, a gray shirt behind him. Hilaria Figueres just tried to snap one out there and put it between the uprights. Very, very unlucky that that one went just slightly out to the left-hand side. Incredible pacer again here, keeping it up from literally the first ball that was thrown into play. Casablanca came in uh, stunned Senfest a little bit. You know, they were straight away, we mean business, and that's exactly what uh, the way they've been playing. I'm sure that uh, that game against Kaya will still be uh, in their uh, system, and they've done ex everything exactly to get it out of their system by the way they've been playing. As I said, in the fourth chucker, they got the lead. And that ball is going to go over the sideboard, so that we will have a change of possession. A little bit unlucky, but again, it just goes to show that these superstars, you know, they are, after all, also human. And um, it is only human to make the odd mistake here or there, even though those mistakes at this level are very, very minimal and very often uh, not uh, self-inflicted. Here we go, then. Senfest looking for the equaliser. Possibly a pass up to the front door for Harrison Marshall, but... Hilario Figueres, he's not going to have you take the ball off him that easy. Once again, on the back foot turns. Now I see done by Laprida. Now he could take a shot. He's going to be a little bit too far away. In comes Losa. He'll take around the bend. Cut shot coming. And look at this. Harrison. Oh, has he? Oh, oh, unlucky, unlucky, but well done, Harrison. And what a cracking shot there on goal. I thought he might, uh, I thought he was actually trying to go for it. Didn't uh, think he was maybe trying to pass it to Harrison and he did a very good job just to try and pick that one up. So very unlucky. Casablanca dodging a huge bullet here. And this man knows it. Sapo Cassette just gets on with the job at hand. Losa, the first man to challenge. Out to the, uh, the left-hand side. He's found Rufino. Ben Sedon. He's got no one to play it to. He's going to have to run it. Cuts it across the field again. Oh, nicely done. Working it very well over the halfway line. Rufino Bensadon taking it all the way. Well, we had a coast-to-coast -coast from him earlier in the first half. A little bit unlucky here. Ganzi appealing. Now, was there a line change? What did Ganzi have the lesser angle? Here comes the replay after that uh, great run. Yeah, to me, it looks like uh, Kanzi might have a very good call here for Casablanca. And again, one of those unintentional fouls. That was not uh, the purpose, but uh, that lesser angle that uh, Grant had stands. Good shot here of Sapo. Sapo Cassette going to the... Uh, to the pit stop to get himself uh, a fresh set of legs. So 3.40, seven seconds remain here in Chaka number five. And uh, just sort of giving my Produce a little bit of a wave if he has any news on that other game. I, for one, am very keen to to know and to be able to still, st still. S okay, a minute and a half remaining in that sixth and final chucker. Still no break in that tie. Seven goals apiece between Ala Greer and the Maltese Falcons. So within the next uh, little over a minute, we should have an answer. But uh, we now go back here, and as I said, that we had the lesser angle there on Grant. So, a penalty in favour of Casablanca. 3.48 remain on the clock. Sapo Cassette can now extend that lead for Casablanca if he can put the ball between the 24 feet or the eight yards.
It's definitely high, but is it straight? Uh, it's gone out wide. So Zenfest dodging a big bullet here. And away we go with a knock-in from the back line for Senfest. This is going to go out to the right-hand side to Laprida. And he's also taking his time, a bit of a miss hit. Has to go back to pick it up, he does. He's got uh, Ben Sedon there right in front of him. Uh, now he leaves it for, once again, Pedro Falabella. What a nice piece of that. He's found uh, Losa. Losa with the touch back up to the front door for Laprida. Unlucky there. Harrison again finds himself in the perfect spot. Just couldn't quite get the connection to that ball. The backhand shot. Hilario appeals. Harrison working hard in front of that goal mouth, but it will be like Sapo. Like like found Ganzi. Good pick up there on the near side by Grant. Sends it up a bit further to Rufino. Can he keep that ball in play? It comes off the boards. Stolen once again here by Senfest on the boards. Laprida trying to turn it and work it. Change of possession quickly taken here. Ball did uh, just trickle over those side boards. Now then, is he going to try and run this one himself? Just uh, making it look so easy. Pedro Falabella. Falabella. Very difficult angle. Not a lot of goal to shoot at. And that would have been it, really. That would have put the, uh, the pressure on very much. So, cut. Well, news just in. Uh, the Maltese Falcons. Oh, it's not done yet. Well, I'll just hold my fire on that one. As uh, we go back to the last minute here of play in uh, this fifth chucker between Casablanca and Senfest. Now, that is a monster shot from uh, Sapo Cassette. He's found Ben Sadon. One touch. No, he didn't get a piece of it. Falabella came in between. Losa will pick it up and turn it. Ganzi tried to uh, yeah, just clip him there on the hook. Sends uh, Laprida downfield. Still Laprida behind him. Harrison Laprida working it, working it. A little snapshot. Wow. Oh, and we have slight situation there in front of the goal mouth. A lot of traffic going on in front of that, uh, like I said, in front of that goal mouth. Magula, Prida, Losa, all of them working so hard. Also, Harrison, Marshall, uh, making his uh, first appearance here at Fort Senfest. Done an absolutely an amazing job here. Keeping up with the, uh, the superstars of the game. Any news from my, uh, my friends here in the studio? Any news from uh, Santa Rita? Okay, well, I'm, see, I'm hearing it's uh, nearly done, that game. I don't want to reveal anything and then uh, have to correct myself. Well, you can see that he's back on his feet. That's a good sign. Magula Prida. Let's hope he's uh, fit enough, strong enough to continue playing. I'm sure he is. Hard as nails is Magula Prida. So, at the moment, with... Uh, as you can see there, 33 seconds remaining. No score yet here in chucker number five. It was four goals to nil for Casablanca in chucker number four. So at least Sandfest have been able to uh, contain Casablanca. He stopped them from shooting any more goals. But those four unanswered goals in that previous chucker uh, aren't helping matters. And they need a quick goal here to keep this... Uh, 
keep this game alive. Let's have another look at what happened here. While he was on the handlebars, had a nice elegant uh, landing until the horse decided to go and take the direct route out. But uh, he's okay. Magu Laprida. And, uh, well, the umpires have had plenty of time to uh, get their take from uh, our instant replay official here, the wonderful Steve Lane. Well, excuse my uh, my silence there. I was just getting uh, some breaking news which just uh, landed, which is that the Maltese Falcons have indeed won their game nine goals to seven. So congratulations to John Klopp, Gonzalito Pieris, Alejandro Navigio Estrada, and Juan Martin Nero. Uh, I'm sure it would have been a thrilling game. Alegria, as always, well done. Sugar, Jason Tincho, and Fred Mannix. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I certainly will be looking at that a little bit later on uh, this afternoon or over the weekend. Now let's go back to the last 30 seconds of play here in this penultimate chucker. Remember, there is one more chucker coming up after this. And Senfest looking for that much-needed equaliser to make it a very exciting sixth and final chucker. Pedro Falabella trying to control and keep uh, that ball exactly where he wants it. Casablanca with Rufino Ben Sedon working it super well, trying to let the clock run down. They'd like to take that slight advantage into uh, the final break. Still Ben Sedon, Gansey going out. They might just pick up another last second goal here as uh, they go over the halfway line. Ben Sedon, he's going to try and run this one. The ball will drop. The horn will blow, and that will be the end of chucker number five. So a complete goalless chucker there uh, on both uh, from both uh, sides. Still ten goals to nine. Senfest chasing that equaliser, and you'll only find out if they get it when you join us here for the sixth and final chucker when we return. Stay with us. Another great season. We had a blast this year. Great fields again. They keep getting better and better. And we got lucky with the rain this year and uh, had a lot of fun polo. There's nothing better than being out here in Aspen, playing with these great people, and amazing views every day. I mean, how could you ask for more? Best part about being out here in Aspen for the polo is the fields, the community, Melissa and Mark, the great competition. And, uh, and the amazing horses, and how the horses enjoy being out here. I love the town, I love the valley, I love also spending time here in Carbondale. Um, so I just love this place in general. I have a lot of friends, I've made lots of friends over the years. The Gansis has have created a spectacular place here uh, that has become a really important summer destination for polo in America. Aspen, I love it there. Our family's around, a ton of horses, a ton of golf, and a lot of fun polo. So. Welcome back, everybody. Sixth chucker action awaits us in a very thrilling game here of the Triple Crown of Polo 2024. 
Brought to you, of course, as always, by CTV Sports. Great to have you with us here on this Friday morning. Uh, Casablanca, who uh, took a good three and a half, nearly four chuckers to get those four goals, which would give it to Senfest uh, level and even pick up the lead, are in the grey shirts, of course, and they'd like to uh, seal the deal. Watch that ball. It's going to be saved on the line. That really would have been a... Uh, a great start here for Chucker, number six for Casablanca. But you can see and feel how much these boys want it. As I said, uh, that uh, loss against Kai Apollo uh, still very much, I think, uh, felt. Um, but they'll have got that out of their system if they can get this over the finishing line. But I also want to uh, uh, wish Senfest, of course, all the very best of luck here in this final, Chucker, to possibly pick up the equaliser. Uh, which could, of course, uh, and we've had a few of those, push us into overtime. Let's wait and see what happens. That ball went over the back line, coming off a defender. So we will have the equivalent of a corner, a penalty six in favour of uh, Casablanca. And uh, that would be the kind of start that I'm sure that they would be looking for here at uh, the beginning of Chaka number six. Sapuka said, I'm pretty sure he'll be the man to do the honours. Just waiting there for the umpire to call play. And then he will, uh, he will make and take that penalty six. And I'm just being... Right. Well, we're just. Uh, I'm just being told here by the, uh, by our, uh, our production that uh, there was a trigger. Whether or not it was indeed uh, a penalty six. You can see here on the replay. So uh, the umpires are triggering that play. Good call. Clearly, the ball was not. Uh, put over the back line there by a defending player. So they, uh, at least they dodged the uh, the shot on goal here, Senfest. Have possession, have the time, um, just need that goal. And they're working it. Pedro Falabella on the boards. Boards again will just trickle over. So there will be a change of possession. Not really what you want to be doing now is giving that ball away. Well, I'm going to have to correct myself because, uh, oh, no, it is a change of possession. It's hit from the spot and it's going to be taken quickly here by Senfest. So they still have it up to the front door. Laprida, everybody huddling around the uh, the eight goal of Magoo Laprida. Has he found a little gap? He's got Gansy sticking to him. Laprida, well, the ball is going to be, uh, the ball goes through and Magoo Laprida. Picks up the first goal here in Chaka number six. And not only that, brings his team right back into this game. Double figures then. Ten goals apiece here in the sixth and final Chaka. And a good five and a half minutes remaining on the clock. Ball back in play. Casablanca have it. Hilario, a little under the next shot. Nicely done. Looking for Ben Sedan. Yeah, he's still there sticking with his man. Losa tried to stop him. He's going to have to have another stop attack. He does. Finds Falabella over on the far side. Pedro chips it over the halfway line. Nobody there in a white shirt. Sapo Cassette sends it straight back. To where it came from. He's found Rufino. Ben Sedan. Rufino. Round the outside. Oh, he's lost it. Losa. Yeah, just picking it up in the uh, nick of time there because Ben Sedan would have been through. In comes Ganzi. Out towards the boards. Once again, Rufino coming out on top. Just timed it just right before he took that shot. Losa against Ben Sedan. Keeps it in play. Hilario just behind him. Now then, Laprida. 
Can he clear it and get a little bit of distance to that goal mouth? No, it's going to be Sapo Cassette. Waiting for that opportune moment. He knows he's got a player right behind him. Sapo. Now he leaves it. Round the outside. Ben Sedon. Ben Sedon. The finishing touch on the near side. And now this could be the counter-offensive for Senfest. Plays it out towards the boards. And then back across. Cheeky and very effective. But nobody there to be the recipient. Ganzi. Will push that ball towards the boards, but gets pushed a bit further downfield. Still Gamzee. Clever little player there by Falabella, but uh, there was nobody there to pick up that ball. 3.24, and we will have a courtesy change before we can tell you exactly what happened on that last play. The ball came off the boards. A new line, of course, is created once that ball comes off the boards, and to determine who has that right of way, is something I'm going to let the umpires work out. You can see them there just uh, in discussion as to who had that automatic right of way. That's the kind of uh, play that you uh, definitely want to have an IRO, an instant replay official, to look at that frame by frame to determine exactly once that ball came off the boards, who would have the automatic possession. Whilst we have a courtesy change, and the players and the umpires worked that one out. I'd like to remind you that tomorrow, uh, the World Polo League action here, the Triple Crown, continues. Saturday, the 13th of April, 4 o'clock, Kaya taking on Travieso. And Kaya, uh, of course, already with a win. They won and beat this team, Casablanca, 14 goals to 11. Travieso beating Senfest. At nine goals to eight. So those two powerhouses, Kaya, Polo and Travieso, tomorrow afternoon, four o'clock. You know where CTV Sports, right here in the heart of Wellington. So tune in for that. And of course, for all the updates on the schedule, just go to your Chucker TV app or to Grand Champions Polo Club to get an update on any changes that might have occurred with the up and coming schedule for the next few weeks days so 10 goals apiece 324 on the clock anyone's game courtesy change and let's see what the umpires made of that last uh decision on that last whistle it would appear that they've given the ball to casablanca so they're going to get uh, a hit from the spot of 5a and uh I'm pretty sure that they're going to want to hold on to this ball <clears throat> for as long as they can within these 324 because Senfest, well, you give them the ball, they will be all hands on deck and they'll be running and gunning to try and just nick a win right at the very end here of this. Uh, and it really has been uh, a very, very thrilling game of the Triple Crown of between Casablanca and Senfest. Now then, it's uh, Mr. Cassette. To me, even go for the direct shot. Very high, very long, in front of goal, Ganzi, Ilario, and Ilario puts it through. So he'll be happy with that, didn't get the two-pointer, but uh, Hilario Figueres, and I'm sure Sapper will be happy just picking up the one-pointer. Ganzi had a crack at it, it deflected, and then a flick of the wrist by Hilario Figueres, picking up only his second goal, but a very important second goal here for the six-goaler. So again, one goal in it. A good two and a half minutes remain. Can Senfest do what they've done in the past? Answer with a quick goal and keep that pressure on Casablanca to possibly maybe even push this game into overtime. On the near side, Cassette. He wants to get the job done within the, uh, the six chucker game that of course uh, is scheduled or was scheduled here does not I'm sure want to go into overtime this remember this is extremely demanding on both the four and the two-legged athlete and uh, those concentration levels have to be kept at a very very constant high Senfest under two minutes Gansey he leaves him behind nicely done here with the number two Losa, Losa, taking it all the way. A bouncing ball. Losa, in comes Falabella to put it through the posts. 
just wide. Just ever so slightly wide, but you can see it's everybody mobilizing, everybody getting deep into the half of Casablanca. They want to shut them down early. Sapo, I'm sure, will have a little trick up his sleeve. Possession is the key word of the day here for Casablanca. Out to the left-hand side. Where is, and there he is, Rufino Bensadal. He's not going to get to the ball quick enough. It will be La Prida. La Prida keeping the ball within the half of Casablanca. Steel Sandfest. Again, Facundo Losa. Losa leaves it. Falabella. Another attack on that Casablanca goal. In comes the Prida as well. They all want a piece of it, but it'll be Ganzi. Well done, Grant, to pick it up and try and clear it. Surrounded there by Senfest attackers. They have it once again. Sapo comes in. Lends a helping hand. We'll try and clear it and get that ball away. We're down to 30 seconds remaining. A goal to win it, or possibly a run here for Sapo. Cassette to finish on a very high note. He's left the pack behind. Sapo all the way now on his own. Nobody at the front door is going to need a very, very tight under the next shot. Now he's going to leave it in play, give it back to Hill. Hilario, and Hilario, well, he's uh, not happy. Sandfest, counter-attack. I like the fact that they're letting them play now and letting them run. Harrison, back to Ganzi and Casablanca. The last few seconds. Are they going to run out of time? Sapo. And they are. They're going to run out of time. What a great way to finish. Yeah, shaking hands, of course. I think that is uh, absolutely much, uh, very much in order here. So what a cracking game of polo. 11 goals to 10, the final score. Shots on goal. Well, there's your answer. 20 from Casablanca. So seven more than those of uh, Senfest. A throw-in's pretty uh, clean there. Senfest also slightly higher on the committed fouls, but overall, I think uh, a cracking game of polo. As uh, we will leave you now with these pictures of the teams shaking hands and congratulate Casablanca on their first win, making it one and one. Senfest, unfortunately, 0 oh and 2. But uh, nonetheless, it's always been a pleasure to watch, uh, uh, in this case, Harrison, Marshall, Facundo, Losa, Magula, Prida, and Pedro Falabella. That's it from us for this morning. Remember tomorrow to tune in, 4 o'clock, Kaya versus Travieso, 4 o'clock here on CTV Sports.